these kinds of ideas, uh, that we have ideas that can uh, be very useful for them. So actually there's a... First of all, you have to understand what is the basic principle of civilization. What do you want to fulfill? What is the <coughs> goal, the, the, there are <coughs> different species of life, uh, beginning from aquatics, fishes, and animals in the water. <coughs> Then as the water dries up, then vegetation comes. In this way there is evolution from uh, aquatics to vegetable life, then um, moving insects, reptiles, then gradually birds, from insect, the flies come out, and then flies gradually comes to bird. Then from birds to beast, four legged. Then from beast to human being. Then human being, the aborigines, uncivilized. Then you come to civilized life which is generally known as Aryan light. So the Aryan civilization, Vedic civilization. In this way we get this human form of life, developed consciousness. Now we should try to understand what I am. Am I this body or something else? <coughs> that is the subject matter of inquiry. So where is that department of knowledge? Where do we fit in? Huh? Do you mean where do we fit in? Yes. We, the organization <coughs> that I work for, the government that I work for is, of course, very, very different, no doubt, to in ideas and in philosophies uh, to all of you and you, for example. We work within, uh, however, a situation where we are concerned that within the framework of Australia's society, which involves uh, people, private enterprise, uh, people and pop, pop, increasing people and private uh, business, private business, and private enterprise, industry, increasing population, all of these placing demands on what naturally is Australia, what you were talking about to begin with the evolution of Australia, the, the continent, the land mass, <coughs> the birds, the animals. Uh, of course we have a, a, a magnificent and, and unique and diverse yeah. fauna and flora. Yeah. Uh, these we must try to uh, protect and preserve uh, for two reasons. Our ideas are that, that, uh, that we we must, we, we, we have to be, to an extent, slaves to uh, the, the, the 20th century civilization, or what we call and know as civilization. In other words, our function stops or is frustrated if a government won't give us money to continue our work and our research. So in other words, we have to direct a large part of our research towards uh, people and making life and opportunities better for people. 
We can't, however, do that. We can't improve agricultural production. We can't improve forests. We can't improve recreational opportunities in forest lands around cities if we don't consider sympathetically, thoughtfully and scientifically the natural resources of Australia. So it's interesting that, that, that you mentioned to begin with um, uh, in the evolution, say, of uh, the evolutionary cycle in Australia, you mentioned the, the Aborigines. The Aborigines were in fact far better uh, uh, at maintaining and conserving the central Australian landscapes, the central Australian arid regions, uh, than uh, any uh, Australian since European colonisation. The Aborigines lived in almost perfect harmony with their environment for 30,000 years, 30 to 40,000 recorded years, that's how far our research can take us back, uh, whereas in uh, a little over a hundred years, European man in Australia has done in places irreparable damage to not only the, veg the vegetation but also the soils uh, of arid Australia. It's damage that will probably never ever be repaired because in the, the environment is so delicate in Central Australia that as soon as uh, our cloven-footed animals, our sheep and our cattle for example, are brought into the arid areas, uh, they eat, they trample, they remove vegetation, this loosens the soil, the soil is very thin, it's very infertile, and it blows away, and virtually all you have left is rock. And nothing grows, of course, on rock. This, that's, a, that's an oversimplification, uh, and perhaps an overdramatization, but this has happened in Australia. It didn't happen when the Aborigines lived here undisturbed by us. It has happened since European man has come. In Perth, in this city, around this city, since um, Europeans have come, we have removed forests, we've cut down trees, we've tilled the soil, we have changed the natural order of things, we have increased the amount of water from rain that flows through the soil, it's getting more and more salty. We are affecting uh, our coastal wetlands, as we call them, the, the lagoons and the, and the lakes and the marshes, so that they are becoming both more salty and more clogged with um, uh, silt and soil and debris. Water birds can, in some areas, no longer live there. Fish are dying. A lot of migratory fish and crabs, for example, are no longer migrating to their uh, traditional uh, breeding grounds. So our work, our, our approach is, and I have to stress that it is scientific and therefore it's long term, and we're only a very young group here in Western Australia, but our approach is to attempt first to understand what has happened, to understand what is happening, and then slowly to be able to suggest ways of improving or halting what is happening which is bad and putting forward ideas for what might happen which is good, which is good both for people. We, we're stuck with that. We're stuck with our urban, whether we like it or not, uh, we're stuck with our urban civilization. We're stuck with our Western way of doing things, unfortunately. But that being the case, we still... The we Aborigines, <coughs> they're growing that food? The they're Aborigines? Food. Oh, no, 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 no. The Aborigines uh, grew nothing, really. They were nomadic. They, um, they, they were mostly um, uh, meat eaters and um, uh, insect <coughs> eaters. There are, for example, one of one of the one of the staples of the uh, uh, of the Aborigines was a very very thick and very fat grub called a witchetty grub, which lived in the roots of of certain um, certain low bushes, and these the tear the bush over, and these fat grubs would would appear, which would be eaten live, eaten raw, without um, cooking. 
Yeah. No yeah. cooking. Simply no cooking. Uh, immediately. Mm. Wrigley. <laughs> the fresher the better. Mm. Um, they used to eat um, small furry animals, bandicoots, wombats. Um, there were no rabbits, of course, in those days. Rabbit has been uh, a disaster introduced by man, by uh, by uh, European man. Uh, but they used to occasionally pound the uh, the grass seeds from from a few species of arid zone grasses uh, and and um, make a, a kind of an unleavened bread from it, which they would then bake. Um, but generally, the Aborigines were nomadic; they were shifting, and they didn't cultivate. They didn't uh, they didn't till the soil ever. But. Uh, we, we must, um, whilst attempting to, to provide for uh, the inevitable um, Australian people and the growth of population, uh, we must also try to do that within the confines and the dictates of nature yeah. and, and the, the natural resources which, which we have. Australia is very rich in a lot of natural resources. It's very, very poor in others. It is quite poor in water, and of course, water is is absolutely basic to the growth process. Um, Australia has is is has abundant um, sunlight, solar energy, which is which is the basis of of, uh, of, of uh, photosynthesis. Very deal. But but and and vegetable growth. But uh, we lack water, uh, and in Perth, uh, we are doing an excellent job at ruining our water. It's criminal what, what uh, in, in, in many respects what is going on. And this is what we must do. So we are trying to, to strike a balance between uh, science for and research for, uh, this, for the benefit of people, but it must be also for the benefit of, of the environment because... You find out this was... Uh, uh, Anand Bhavanti Bhutani Anand A-N-N-A-D Anand A-N-N-A-D Hmm Anand Anad Bhavanti Bhutani Parjanyad Anasambhava Satyagyad Bhavati Parjanyo Jagya Kama Samud Bhavaha Translation All living bodies subsist on food grains, which are produced from rains. Rains are produced by the performance of Jagya, sacrifice, and Jagya is, pr- is born of prescribed duties. But, but. Purport. Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushana, a great, commentary, a great commentator on the Bhagavad Gita, writes as follows Ye Indradiyanga Taya Vastitam Dagam Savishvaram Vishnum Abhyacha Tachisham Ashnanti Tena Adadeha Dantaram Sapandayanti Teshanta Savishvarasya Bhakta Savaki Vishaya Anadi Kala Vibridhaya Atmanu Bhava Pati Bandhakaya Nikilai Papaya Vimuchante The Supreme Lord, who is known as the Jagya Purusha, or the personal beneficiary of all sacrifices, is the master of all demigods who serve him as the different limbs of the body serve the whole. Demigods like Indra, Chandra, Varuna, etc. are appointed officers who manage material affairs, and the Vedas direct sacrifices to satisfy these demigods so that they may be pleased to supply air, light, and water sufficiently to produce food grains. When, when Lord Krishna is worshipped, the demigods, who are different limbs of the Lord, are also automatically worshipped. Therefore, there is no separate need to worship the demigods. For this reason, the devotees of the Lord, who are in Krishna consciousness, offer food to Krishna and then eat, a process which nourishes the body spiritually. By such action, not only are past sinful reactions in the body vanquished, but the body becomes immunized to all contamination of material nature. When there is an epidemic disease, an antiseptic vaccine protects a person from the attack of such an epidemic. Similarly, food offered to the Lord Vishnu 
food offered to Lord Vishnu and then taken by us makes us sufficiently resistant to material affection, and one who is accustomed to this practice is called a devotee of the Lord. Therefore, a person in Krishna consciousness who eats only food offered to Krishna can counteract all reactions of past material infections which are impediments to the progress of self-realization. On the other hand, one who does not do so continues to increase the volume of sinful action, and this prepares the next body to resemble hogs and dogs, to suffer the resultant reactions of all sins. The material world is full of contaminations, and one who is immunized by accepting prasadam of the Lord, food offered to Vishnu, is saved from the attack, whereas one who does not do so becomes subjected to contamination. Food grains or vegetables are, act are factually eatables. The human being eats different kinds of food grains, vegetables, fruits, etc., and the animals eat the refuse of the food grains and vegetables, grass, plants, etc. Human beings who are accustomed to eating meat and flesh must also depend on the production of vegetation in order to eat the animals. Therefore, ultimately, we have to depend on the production of the field and not on the production of big factories. The field production is due to sufficient rain from the sky, and such rains are controlled by demigods like Indra, sun, moon, etc., and they are all servants of the Lord. The Lord can be satisfied by sacrifices, therefore, one who cannot perform them will find himself in scarcity. That is the law of nature. Jagya, specifically the Sankirtan Jagya, prescribed for this age, must be therefore performed to save us at least from scarcity, scarcity of food supply. Did you follow? So the only remedy is that we should perform jagga. And this jagga is in this age, jagga, performance of jagga is very costly. After at the present moment things are not available. So we should perform yoga. If you don't perform yoga, then nature will restrict supply and put so many impediments. The yoga bhavati parjana. If you regularly perform yoga, then there will be sufficient rainfall. There is sufficient water. It's going all round. There is water. There is no scarcity of water. But you cannot touch it without God's uh, intervention. The same water will be converted into cloud and will be distributed on the land. And the water again glides down to the reservoir of water. This is nature's way. Uh, but if you do not perform yoga, this machine will not work. To get water from the sea, convert into cloud, and then distribute. This will be restricted. But we must all perform huh? We must all perform yoga. Yes, we have to perform yoga. And that yoga at the present moment is very easy. So Sankirtanai Jagai. It is recommended that we have to recognize the authority of the Lord. And in this age, simply by performing Sankirtan Jagga, uh, he will be satisfied. Sankirtan Jagga means to glorify the Lord uh, in so many ways. We glorify the Lord, uh, His form, His activities, uh, uh, His name, His quality. So it is not difficult job. We can 
sit together, family wise, community wise, or in office, in factory, we can sit down together and glorify the Lord. This is a very difficult job. You make it sound very, very simple, of course. And yes, why don't you accept it? Well, I, for one, might. <coughs> no, no, but, I'm not but, talking about you. No, 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 sure, certainly. But uh, imagine the man, as, as, as we uh, have to uh, consider, the man, the men, the thousands of them, on their tractors, at their bulldozers, hacking down natural forest. Uh, he says we have to consider the men who are working the machines to to, uh, to take down the forest for agriculture. Is that right? Yes, and that's the resource. Uh, the, the, sorry, the point I'm making is is that the, the there are so many people in Australia who would have no time. They are too busy making money. They are too busy doing what and they what do. You do with money. <clears throat> If there is no grain, then will you eat money? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly that not. That is foolishness. That is foolishness. Money is not required. Required food grains. But uh, unfortunately, of course, increasingly now in in our society, uh, there is an increasing ability to produce food almost artificially. And, and this, this, this happens more and more. Where is the scarcity? Why you are complaining the scarcity of water? Why you are complaining scarcity? If there is enough food, then why you are complaining about scarcity? Well, I complain because I am a geographer, because I am working with an eye to the future, with an eye to a long-term situation where... Uh, I can see that, that, I, that your problem and my problem is not different. <coughs> you are thinking, I am not thinking, it may be. But you require food grain, I require food grain, the animals require food grain, and everyone requires food grain. <coughs> so <coughs> if there is sufficient food grain, <coughs> then everyone will be happy. Yes, now, perhaps. How about in 50 years' time, then? Huh? How about in 50 or 100 years' time? But you are complaining of a scarcity of water. Yes, sure. No, no. But, but, but also, sorry, I, I don't mean, and perhaps I didn't explain myself well enough, I, I do not um, mean to, to address myself only to a problem which is here with us right now. Perth, for example, right now, this city does not have a scarcity. There's plenty of water around, 70% in fact of the water which is delivered to domestic homes in Perth every, every summer is, spent, is, is put on gardens to make them green. It's not used for growing vegetables, it's not used for uh, human consumption or human uh, existence, for supporting human life, it's used for making lawns such as outside this house, for making lawns and trees green so that that houses will be attractive and the property values will go up. Once again, it's the money ethic, it's the money situation, it's, it's what, what uh, our society uh, exists on, it's, it's, it's what makes it all go round. But what, what I am worried about is the situation in a hundred years' time. There isn't a scarcity now, although the water is, getting, is becoming less and less acceptable, where by taking down the forests we're letting more water seep into the soil, it's unlocking the salt that's been in the soil for thousands of years and so on. That's our problem. It's, 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 it's long term and it's complex. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about generations to come, not, not right. now. If there is uh, rainfall sufficiently, that water is distilled water, pure water. See, if pure water is distributed all over the country. It's pure when it hits the ground, but it isn't, unfortunately, when it comes out into the streams. He says it's pure when the rain comes down, but when it hits the ground, mm -hmm. it becomes impure, and then the no, salt no, no. gets in. That's that. It is not. <coughs> Rainwater is pure water. Sure. Mm. <coughs> so, 
When it touches the ground, it may become impure. It doesn't matter. But the water is pure. Water is coming. You cannot take water from the sea and moisten the ground. That is not possible. But pure water comes down from the rain. It is utilized. But but a lot of the water that is that that in our our dams and the water that we use for irrigation south of here, which is the basis for the dairy produce of Perth, is becoming slowly because of its contact with the ground and its travel through the soil and its seepage out into streams and into underground areas, that water is slowly becoming, in many respects, almost as but salty as, as, the sea. You want water. as the sea. If the water is reserved on the top of the hill, then it gradually comes down. That is nature's gods are in the river, fall down, and you can use that water. <coughs> that is the nature's arrangement. Just like you keep your water on the tank, <coughs> and by pipe you get down. So there is nature's arrangement. The water is stocked on the top of the hill, and throughout the whole year the pipe is the river. That water must be there. <coughs> that is the first problem. Therefore, here it is said, Parjanat uh, Anasama. Uh, you must have sufficient water. Water is already there, but it has to be purified, kept on the top of the heap, water tank, and it will come down in rivers, then you take. Uh, and when the water falls down, when there is sufficient water, the ground becomes clean. So it is no more polluted. Do Once, you know how much? Uh, it, it's, it's a very complex thing. Mm-hmm. In the hills outside Perth, there are. But this is a general a, plan that you must have sufficient water. And that water must fall down from the cloud, not by your system. You uh, pump out water from the sea and utilize. That is uh, sure. We can't do that. Yes. We, we can't do that. Therefore, you must have pure water, and that water is uh, manufactured or supplied through God's mercy, not your mercy. No, certainly not, and I wouldn't presume uh, to, to, to suggest in any way that that was the case. What our problem is, though, is that, is that because so of that what, problem of what, solved, but if you perform sacrifice, that is the verse, annad bhavanti bhutani parjanyat annasambha. And jagyat bhavati parjanya jagya karna samudho. Very simple formula. If we follow this formula, that first of all, if we want regular water supply, that we want, not that if we want, we must have regular water supply. So that is possible by performing yoga. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yoga means to satisfy the Supreme Law. That is yoga. The yoga karma samud bhava. Karma means your activities. Whatever you are doing, that is karma. You are working as ge- ge- geologist, huh? what is it? Geographer. Geographer. And uh, another man is working in the factory or somewhere else. Everyone is working. So by working, one, the aim should be how to perform yoga. That is, that should be the Suppose you are a geographer and I am a religious preacher and he is a cultivator, he is a factory man, he is a motor car driver. So that is all right. But if we sit down together and perform yoga, simplify glorifying the Lord, 
Where is the loss in your part or my part or his part? Where is the loss? Suppose as a geographer you sit down, as a religious preacher I sit down, as a motor car driver he sits down, as a factory worker he sits down, and perform jagga. Jagga means to chant the holy name of the Lord. Where is the division? I wish it were as simple as that for the majority of people. Yeah, everyone. Even the child can take part. Even the child, poor man, educated, non-educated, rich man, mm. poor man, mm. worker, everyone can sit down and chant Hare Krishna mantra. So why don't you accept this formula? How do you know that I haven't? Huh? But, but, uh, how, no about, how, about, how about the people living next door or the people... Ne- no, no, they can form, they're, they're also they were groups. You can form your group. Suppose there are hundred gentlemen in this neighborhood. Uh, we can sit down. If he has no time, they can sit down with family members. Everyone has got family. Everyone has got his wife, children, or somebody else, servant, sit down for Habana and chant her it. Where is the difficulty? And the difficulty at all. But it Why doesn't happen, does it? Well, you have to introduce. That is our movement. Sure. Yes, I can see that. But 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 why aren't people doing it? Why aren't more people in in Perth, in the city? Why aren't more doing it? I tell you one reason, well, and it is no, because no, Austra- the Austra- people should be educated. That if you do not perform this yoga, you'll suffer. But of course, there are conflicting educations, aren't there? They're, they're, they're what about they? What is the wrong there? that if we sit down together and chant Hare Krishna mantra without any loss of our uh, factory or work, but if there is some gain, why not try it? A delightful idea, a beautiful idea, and, 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 and a very simple-sounding idea. Yeah. How about the, however, the Anglicans, the Roman Catholics, who are bound in the... In the, in, the in, in, in Ro- Roman Catholics, we don't say the Roman Catholics cannot perform yoga. Who can we be? say that you chant the holy name of God. So Roman Catholics, they have God or not? No God. Well, they think they do a lot of that on a Sunday morning. And, uh, whatever it may be, any religious system, religious system means connection with God. Is it not? Yeah, well, that's what it's supposed to be. Without God, is there any religion? Any religion, is there any religion we say, no, we have no God. Is there any religion? No. So, so we are asking, chant the holy name of God. So if you are Roman Catholic... Any, any man's God. Any man's God. God is one. God cannot be two. But we are three. Roman Catholics don't agree with you in that, do they? Eh? Roman Catholics don't agree with you in that. Roman Catholics have their no, own no, God. Roman, no, no. This is one of the problems. It, it, no, no. It's nowhere near as simple as, as, as I'm sure, as, as, as you suggest, no, no, no. and I wish I it wish is it were. It is simple. The Roman it Catholics are a jealous people. Roman Catholics are jealous religious people. Hmm. They refuse even still to accept, for example, that, that <coughs> Anglicans pray in the same way as they do. They refuse to accept that Anglicans pray as well as they do. No, I think that... Maybe Anglican, maybe Roman Catholics, maybe Christian, maybe Hindu or Muslim or anyone. Whether they have God in their conception of religion or not. Do they have God or no God? No, they will have they, they must have they to must be have. religion. So I am asking that you chant the holy name of God. Oh. If you have God, you chant the holy name of that God. I don't say that you chant the holy name of my God. You chant the holy name of your God. God is one, just like water. Somebody says water, somebody says pani, somebody says jaw, but the end is, the aim is water. Similarly, God, I may say Krishna, he may say Jehovah, the, the Muslims may say Allah, or others may say something else, but the aim is God. 
Well, why not be better off then? Because obviously, therefore, uh, going, going on what you just said, there are a lot of people in Australia every day, perhaps certainly once every week, chanting the name of their God. Mm. Why then do we still have problems? Mm. No, no problem. Are there not enough people chanting uh, to their God? Mm. Or to the one God? Sir, uh, problems. Suppose he who have uh, mm. but aborigines, they have God. They have their name of God. Yes, well, they, they have multiple gods, yes. Uh, so, uh, if they chant the holy name of God, uh, there is no loss. At least there is no loss. No, certainly. Oh, no, we've established uh, that, sure. So, why not begin this? There is no loss. You are not losing anything. Suppose if you chant the Why do we still name have of God as a <coughs> geographer, your salary is not in decreased. So there is Certainly no. not, no. But but why? But why is there? If if people are in their own way then chanting to their God. No, no, why, ultimately why? ultimately you require sufficient supply of water to grow your food. Vegetables, or even if you are animal eater, to maintain your animals, you require sufficient water, and that is recommended. That jagna bhavati purcha, and the jagna is very simple: chanting the holy name of the Lord. So, why not introduce that every home, every factory, every community? every place, they should sit down at least for half an hour and chant the holy name. Could I ask you very simply, if, if as you, su- you suggest this, if we all do this, then will, will that, for example, remove the problems that we do, that, that our society in any rate, at any case, generates for ourselves? We have more and more pollution, depending on the way the wind blows, for example, we get at times choking pollution from the industrial complexes down to the south of this city. The are, next these, are, these, will be, are these problems going to be... Nana, going to be the next helped? question will be, if you get sufficient grain for eating, why should you take to industry? To make money, mm-hmm. very simply. No, no, what about money? Money means you require the necessities of life. So, but that's not what the multinational corporations that that, are, that enjoy using Australia's re, uh, resources mm-hmm. are going to say. All of the hills to the east of Perth are almost entirely made up of bauxite, from which, of course, we get not that the stainless steel, but from which we get aluminium. Aluminium uh, is is a, a very bauxite is a very very favoured uh, material now. Um, the, the West Indies are rich in it, and, and a few other countries, but not many. Uh, Australia is now part of, as they call it, part of the, of the bauxite club. Uh, and, and Dr Cairns, uh, our Deputy Prime Minister and Treasurer, was some months ago talking with, with a number of people in the West Indies about fixing world prices for, for, uh, for bauxite and, and eventually aluminium. America has Camalco and Alcoa to, to very large international groups have uh, large interests in the bauxite in the hills around Perth. They are in it to make money. They're in it to return money to their shareholders in America. There are two ways of living. One way of living is called uh, material enjoyment Mm. or sense enjoyment. This is one way of life. In Sanskrit it is called pravittima, how to enjoy more, 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 more. This is called pravittima. That is going on. The whole, at the present moment, the whole civilization, throughout the whole world, everyone is trying to uh, get more money. Mm. More money means uh, more sense and uh, More money means more sense and this is called pravittima. Well, maybe less less enjoyment, but more possessions. Uh, uh, 
No, enjoyment in this way of life, more sense enjoyment, will never be able to enjoy our happiness. That is not possible. That is the nature's fault. You can prove it. If you simply want to enjoy, you can enjoy. But you will create more miseries. So this is one way of life. That you enjoy your senses and create more miseries. This is one way of life. And if you want to decrease your miseries, then there is another life which is called simple life. Simple life means you produce your food and you produce your cloth. So you dress yourself nicely, you eat yourself nicely, keep yourself fit and glorify the Lord. This is one way of life. And the other way of life that we don't care for the Lord. Let us enjoy the senses to the topmost capacity and be happy. So this way of life will never make you happy. You simply go on struggling. This is another way of life. One way of life. The another way of life that the human life is meant for God realization. Uh, that is Vedanta philosophy. Athata Brahma Jiddhyana. Now, by evolutionary process, we have come to the human form of life. And it is meant for asking, what is my constitutional position? Am I this body or am I something else? The dogs, he cannot put this in play. The dog, he thinks that he is dog, that he is jumping. Is barking and eating, sleeping, and having sex. That's all. If I ask one dog, please sit down, hear Bhagavad Gita, it is not possible. But you are a human being. If I ask you, Mr. Sutton, sir, sit down, hear from the Bhagavad Gita, you can do that. First of all, we must know the difference between dog and me. The dog is incapable to understand Bhagavad Gita. But human being, just like we are selling this book in the Western countries, many millions of copies. Because they are human beings. We are not selling among the cats and dogs. No. So if a human being does not become inquisitive to understand what he is, in which way his progress should be made, then he remains at home. The dog cannot do it. And we have got the capacity, if we neglect this facility and remain like a dog, simply engaged in eating, sleeping, sex and defense, then we remain dog. Then again we become dog. The opportunity was given to us to understand the problems of life, how to solve. If you don't take this opportunity, facility, if we simply remain like that, then we are next life. That also they do not understand that there is next life. Do you believe in the next life? You, as a person, do you believe in the next life? No, I don't. You do not. Yeah. Yes, yes, see. So they are now I'm bad material. Uh, then no, I don't believe it. But I will become an old man anyway. Uh, in the course of my life. Uh, I will become an old man anyway in the course yeah, of my so life. Yeah, so therefore that is future life. If you say I don't believe in it. So are you talking about li- reincarnation, life after death? Yes. Uh, reincarnation you are already in your what is your that's childhood body. Where is that body? Here it is. It's grown. No. It's grown. No. It is changed. It's grown. It's changed. It's Chain. evolved. Yeah. I have evolved. Just the way, anyway, just like evolution, I have evolved anyway, to, 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 to uh, the no, situation. Just try to understand. 
anyway that your boy's body a childhood body is no longer either you say change or grow whatever you say it doesn't matter but at the same bones the same skin But you are the same man that's a fact you understand that you are a child <clears throat> or you are a boy a school boy jumping you remember that body but that body is not existing that's a fact I can't agree. Why not? Because yeah. suppose somebody had seen your childhood body, and for many years he has not seen you, and all of a sudden comes suppose your father's friend. So father and today is there. Oh, you are the same. You will be surprised because he saw you in your childhood body. But I'm less interested in what, how much someone else. I still has. think that you have changed your body. The other man says, "Oh, you have grown up," or generally they take it as grown up. But the actual position of the body has changed. But they're the same bones. Uh-huh. They're the same bones. It's the same skin. My face looks not it is just same. about the same. Medically, it is not the same. Well, the functions are different, but but it's no, the same heart no, that's no, beating. No, not the, the same. same the same veins. Just like in your childhood when you were born. You you had no sex impulse. Now you have got sex impulse. Yes, the body, body, yes, body no, of a I, child, body the body of a boy, they cannot understand sex life because the body is different. And now because you have got different body, you can feel what is sex life. So it is imperceptibly changing. Therefore, we think that it is growing, but it is changing. It is changing swiftly, just like in the cinema spool. The picture is changing, but because it is changing so swiftly, you are seeing that one man is moving. That is the fact. Mm-hmm. There are hundreds and thousands of pictures uh, passed on. When you see that this man is taking this tree and bringing this here, this means there are many pictures. Mm-hmm. So similarly, it is like a spool. Your body is changing every moment. That is medical science. Oh, absolutely. Yes. yes. So you are changing. So you are changing your body. That's a fact. But because you are seeing all in one spool. You are thinking it is growing, it is moving. That's all. But it is changing. This is the science. Uh, so the body is changing, and you remember that you had such and such body. Therefore, you are different from the body. This is the science. So unless we understand that I am not uh, this body, I am different from the body. I am changing body, therefore I will have to change this body and accept another. This is the science, beginning of scientific knowledge. Without understanding this fact, uh, his advancement of knowledge is simply for eating, sleeping, sex, and defense. That's all. There is no advancement. According to Vedic literature. He remains animal. Saiva gokhat jasatu buddhi kuna piti dhatu ke sadhik palatra disu bhuma idjadi jati sabuddhi sarile na parichi janesu avigyesu saiva gokhat. If we cannot understand ourselves, it is very simple. Try to change my body so many times. So naturally, when this body will be useless uh, in this um, life, then I will have to accept another. This is the bharsan, how uh, you find out, dehinasmin yatha dehi tomara yogana vijara tatha dirahantara prati dhirasvatta namayyati. Did it? English? English and... Uh, yeah. Sanskrit first? Uh-huh. देहिनोस्मिन्जथा देहि कुमारं जोगनं जरा 
Tathādihantara pāpti dhīras tattvana muyati Translation. As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. It's simple. Hmm. Ah, but people have no education. That is the defect of the modern thinkers. This is the fact that you are accepting every moment a different body. So after death, you'll have to accept another body. Now we should know what kind of body I'm going to accept next. That is intelligence. That is civilization. And do you mean that that that, the, that, that then will allow me, if I come to that realization, that that will allow me to then continue to improve my mind, continue to study, to think, to gain knowledge. Yes, well, yes. For beyond, say, the normal 65 or 70 years that I might live in what, what I mm-hmm. the imagine, imagine be, to, be, to be this body. The knowledge should be acquired from the beginning of life, from child. But he, by circumstances, I could not get this knowledge uh, from childhood, then we should begin immediately. Because mm-hmm. unless we get this knowledge, our life remains imperfect. We remain animal. The animal does not know this. And after evolutionary process, coming to the human form of body, if we keep ourselves in the darkness of animal life, then our this opportunity is lost. Mm. This is the first problem. Now, unfortunately, the modern education is leaders, uh, they have no education, and they are thinking just like animals, uh, they are this body. Therefore you are thinking, you are Australian, I am thinking I am Indian, he is thinking American, he is only on this bodily concept. But we are not this body. We are different from this body. So unless we understand this point, our aim of life, our standard of civilization is incorrect. But I suppose it's, it's very easy to, uh, to understand and to credit that so many people will be thinking maybe this way because that's part of the basis of being selfish. And after all, a lot of people, particularly, I would imagine, a lot of Australians are basically selfish. They are interested far more in what they can get and do for themselves, not necessarily by working hard, by striving or by reading or by thinking or by studying. They, 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 the, the, the old saying, the fast The human life is main for acquiring knowledge, real knowledge. But so many people don't see it that way. At least one class of man must be thoroughly conversant, thoroughly aware of the things as they are. They are called Brahman. Therefore society should be divided into four classes. The first class men who have got full knowledge of life and the problems of life, that they should be the first class. They may be very few, it doesn't matter. Ideal class. People will learn by their by their behavior, by their character, by their knowledge. So must be there. Yes. Then the next class would be the administrators. Uh, they would be advised by the first class man and they would administer the state. And the third class man they should produce food, enough food for the whole population. And the fourth class man would assist these three higher class, first class, second class, and third class. This is the animal, nature's animal. There are first class men, there are second class men, there are third class men, there are fourth class men. But if you produce simply fourth class men, there cannot be any adjustment. It will be chaotic society. 
That is the present position. There, there is no first class man, there is no second class man, there may be some third class man and all fourth class men. This is the position. Therefore, the whole human society is in chaotic condition. The first class man should understand this. Therefore, it is called dhira sattva namuya. What is the meaning of dhira? This is so good. So well, gently. Mm. He understands immediately. Because. But would you. <coughs> okay. This thing, <coughs> the attainment of this, of this first class, which, which uh, I'm, uh, if I understand you correctly, you're saying is, is very, very necessary for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the removal. Yeah, sure. But you're saying that, that we don't have the first class of man. But, we create. But, but, but. By education, you create. Fine, but how? Okay, how about then the the some of some of the the, the ancient and maybe even now the latter day uh, philosophers. No, let's see the, the, the men the men of, of sobriety and gentleness, the Bertrand yes. Russells, for example. They have to be trained, just like you have been trained up as geographer. Similarly, a certain man can be trained up as first class man by education. But trained by others or trained by themselves? No. Surely trained there must by be one's institution. But training by oneself. No, such as for no, example, no, no, for example no, no. A, by an Albert Einstein or a Bertrand Russell. You have become a geographer, not by yourself. Oh, yes, but we're not talking about me. I mean I'm nowhere near uh, what you're saying as uh, is a first class. I'm talk, talking about our latter day some of our latter day philosophers and, and Bertrand Russell is, is a person, for example, who, for gentleness, sobriety and thought whom I admire very much. Mm. And he has attained that himself. He hasn't been, he was certainly, no, no. as we all must be, surely no, no. trained to begin with. But that, then it's a like, process of, of individual just thought. like we have got defined in institution. This is for educating engineers. This is for educating medical men. This is for educa- educating uh, geographer. As there are different departments. Oh, sure, to begin with. They must, and so they must be. Similarly, there must be a department to train first class men. That is required. We don't have them in our universities. So therefore, it is chaotic. No first class man, or third class, fourth class. What are the specifications for your first class man? Mm-hmm. Yes. Find out. Satta, Sama, Dama, Titikha. Sattva, Sama, Dhamma, Tathikta, Brahma, Karma, Sabharada. Satya or Satya? Satya. Hmm. S-A-T-Y. Hmm. S-A-T-Y. Satya. Hmm. 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 Gyanam, find out, Gyanam, J-N-A-N, Gyanam. Gyanam, Vigyanam, Asvitam. Hmm. Vigyanam, Asvitam, hmm. 1842. Yeah. Hmm. Samo damas tapa socham kyanti ajavam evacha gyanam vigyanam asti kyam brahma kama sambhava jam. Translation Peacefulness, self control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, wisdom, knowledge, and religiousness. These are the qualities by which the Brahmanas work. This is what's question. Who decides whether a man then is. Uh, fits into those uh, criteria and, and becomes a first class man. Who decides? Who is to say whether a man is first class yes, or not? Yes. He should be first of all qualified like this. 
What is that? Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, wisdom, knowledge, and religiousness. But once once a man has has strived for those qualities, how does he know when he's attained them? And sama, sama. First word is sama. Sama means uh, equilibrium of the mind. One should be trained up in such a way that he is not disturbed in his mind in any circumstance. Mm-hmm. That is called sama. And dhamma, dhamma means controlling the senses. Uh, naturally, uh, I find one beautiful old man. I want to talk with him, and, and his other's wife. Uh, but. I should know. Why should I talk with others? Why? It is Dhamma, controlling the senses. Mm. So Sama means keeping the mind always equiposed, and Dhamma, the controlling the mind. Now, suppose if I, I have to eat something to live, so God has given me so many nice food stuff. Food grain, fruits, milk. You know, why should I kill an animal? Unnecessary. Uh, for the taste of my tongue. Selfishness. Selfishness. Uh, but I want to deal. There are in India eighty percent people that are vegetarian. They are living very nicely. Uh, mm-hmm. They are eating sufficient food grain and fruits and milk and milk product. God has given us so many. So why should we maintain slaughterhouse, killing other animals? So a first-class man will not do that. First-class man will think that I want to eat something to keep myself fit, eat my natural products. I can keep myself fit. Why should I kill another animal? And every religion, Teaches that, like like in your Christian religion, God Christ says, "Thou shalt not kill," and they are maintaining slaughterhouse. So this is the condition of the society. How you can become happy? You are violating the rules and regulations of religion, and God, you cannot be. Done. Nature is disturbed in so many. <coughs> that is nature's business. But so many of us, of course, are used to it. We like it. No, I am not and talking we're about you particularly. And we're, and we're general way, general way. So this is first class man. Sama, tama, titikha. Now, suppose I was not a first class man. I was a fourth class man. Now I want to become a first class man. So I was eating meat that this boys, European American boys. They are eating everything. Now they have given up on my word or to associate with me. They have given up meat eating, illicit sex, meat eating. So in the beginning it may be disturbing because I am habituated to all these things and by my spiritual master I order not to do this. So it may be disturbing. And that is called titikha. Tolerance. No, I have to do it. Uh, if I want to make progress to become first-class man, this is order. So I must do it. Even the tolerance, even it is disturbing. In the beginning, it is not disturbing. In the beginning, because I am habituated to do something. Uh, just like a thief, if you ask him to become honest, uh, then it will be disturbing for him. He is habituated. To steal, uh, so that we have to tolerate. Therefore, it is called tithik. Sama dhamma tithik ka arjava. Arjava means simple life, uh, simplicity. Uh, that uh, if I can live in this way, why should I uh, acquire so many things for artificial life? That is called arjava. Sama dhamma tithik ka arjava. Then jnana. Jnana means knowledge that I am not this body. I am spirit soul. 
mind, actually that is the fact. This body is not important. The living force within the body is important. As soon as the living force goes out of the body, what is this value? You may be a great uh, geographer or scientist or Professor Einstein or whatever. As soon as the living force is gone, you are useless. This body is useless. You have to throw it. That is gyanu. That I am taking so much care of this material body, which will not exist, which shall become dust thou art, dust thou beest. Again, it will mix up with these dirty things. I am taking so much care of this body. What about that living force, which is important? Nobody is taking care. Therefore, they are not in gyan of knowledge. They are in ignorance, just like cats and dogs. This is called gyan, and the big gyan. Big gyan means practical application of the knowledge. That is called big gyan, science, scientific knowledge. There is gyan and big gyan asthikam. Asthikam means to believe in the authority. That is called asthi. Just like we are. Speaking about this Bhagavad Gita, because it is spoken by the most supreme authority, Krishna, uh, to believe in the authority. You also believe in authority. But ultimately, in this way, if we acquire this qualification, then we become first class man. So anyone can be trained up, just like this boy, they are fourth class, fifth class, and now they are trained up. To become first class. By just like anyone can become geographer, anyone can become engineer. Do you by think, proper training. Do you think you'll make? We're making progress. <laughs> they are young men. Mm. They are all within thirties. <clears throat> and your aim, all of you, is to become first class men. Mm. Does it matter how long it might take you? Mm. Can you become a first class man soon, within five years? Oh yes. Sufficient. Sufficient. We can make in one year. Really? <laughs> I wish you were Well, I hope I won't give you offence if I look at my watch and say that. Yes, it is a very uh, important matter. If you do <clears throat> not spare time, that is your business. But I'm afraid my life is... is <laughs> Is is one of these one of these selfish yeah. lives? It's Sel- a life that's no, it is. Dom- just dominated, dominated by just natural. This like why first class man require in society. Mm. This like in your body, there is first class part, second class part, third class part, and fourth class part. This like your head is the first class part of your body. If your head is cut up, then everything is finished. True. Similarly, if in the society, if we don't create first class men, that society is dead. Mm. That society is dead. So at the present moment, there is no first class man, according to this one. Therefore, there is great depression, problems, and so on and so on. Mm. So unless you create at least a few percentage of the people, first class men, according to this standard, there cannot be any problem. This is my last word. Thank, Thank you. you. I wish I wish you all well, and, uh, and maybe maybe I should think uh, along those lines myself. Yeah. It's been most interesting talking to you. It is, it is necessary to create a class of men, first class, mm. ideal. And if you all create fourth class men, then there cannot be peace. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent talking to you. Thank you very much. And I wish I wish you well in in Melbourne. Uh, yes. I'm and then good. in Hawaii. Yes. Fiji and Hawaii. Fiji. You can keep his address. Yeah. yeah. Here's a sweet we have made from milk. Yeah. Milk prepared. Thank you. All right. Good night. Hare Krishna. Yeah.